Okay, I uh, thought uh, CNC people out there, hobbyists, might be interested in this. Um, we've, uh, it's a professional machine shop here, and uh, for some time we've um, been limited to the use of a fourth axis because most of our machines, um, uh, only two of our machines have a... Uh, a fourth axis but they only increment in five degrees and the one machine that has a true fourth axis is banked up with a lot of work and as a result of that we looked at options for getting um, another fourth axis because it would really free up a lot of our um, fine indexing work. Now most of the work we do here 99% of it is just fine indexing but sometimes running to within decimal points of a degree but nonetheless it is just move stop machine then move to a new position stop machine so we're not doing true uh, fourth axis work as uh, such as machining spirals and stuff like that so there's a few solutions but uh, doing a bit of research on Google and looking up CNC stuff I found a nice conversion for a rotary a standard rotary table now I've had this vertex rotary table I think it's an eight inch maybe six inch, I'm not sure, I think it's eight inch. I've had it for years um, and had a typical crank wheel here. Like this is the, all the crank wheel bits and I've actually put a, a dividing plate on it for accurate work. But I found that you could mount a stepper motor directly to the input shaft here um, via a bellows coupling and a, a fairly simple machined adapter and which has got, as I said, a bellows coupling coupling directly to the input shaft. Now the gear reduction between the wheel and the drive is 90 to 1. So just using some mathematics and making some calculations, we were, it was quite easy to gear the stepper motor and adjust it accordingly in the software. Now the software I'm using to drive this is Mac 3 and it works really well. It's very impressive. Um, quite straightforward to set up. You set all your options in the motor settings and and uh, your steps and do all your calculations and uh, yeah, probably have your motor set up and tuned within less than 15 minutes. And then the, so the, the laptop here with the Mac 3 software on it via the uh, parallel port is connected to a breakout board which is here. Now this breakout board is basically the interface between the computer's parallel port and the stepper motor driver which is a gecko here. Fantastic little unit. They're highly recommended for the few extra bucks. Don't even bother with the Chinese one. In my opinion, this is the only way to go. This all worked pretty much straight out of the box. So once we had it all tuned up and working, um, we could test it, and I can show you that in a second. But the game plan is that we are going to hook this up to a spare um, a G code or M code in the um, Mazak machine, and that'll basically tell the Mac 3 to go to its next move, which will be pre-programmed position. And then when the Mac 3 reaches that position, it sends a signal back to the, um, the Mazak to continue machining. And this has been successfully done in the past. My research showed me others that have done it. I can see no reason why we can't get it done here. In fact, we will be able to do it because the controller that we're using has, um, has exactly the same um, relay blocks and terminal blocks available that other Mazaks of similar vintage have used. And in fact, there's no reason why this can't be used on any machine with spare M codes. Um, yeah, so the plan is to use this as fine indexing and free up um, some of the work we have to do for, um, for other machines. So we're not all queuing it up on the one machine. Anyway, without any further ado, let's have a bit of a look here. So what I've done is I've written a short program, just G code, and um, you basically go to file, file, you know, load G code, you know, select, select the, the program you want, dump it in and you're pretty much right. I've already got the program loaded, although it looks like I just lost it. So we go load G code and I'm using this fourth axis sample program. Click on that, open and there it is, it's in. So we make sure we rewind to the start and here we go, cycle start, see what happens. Uh, reset first and try again.
Okay, now I'll move it into single block mode. Okay, so it's just stopped at uh, A120. And the next move will be A25. A being the um, the axis, not actually a B axis, it's actually an A axis on the on the Mac 3. And let's see if we're on 25 there. Now you can't see that because it's pretty dark, but I can assure you that that is absolutely spot on 25. Now if I wanted to, for example, I could... Uh, uh, we'll go, uh, we'll reset that. And then what we'll do is I'll, um, I'll go to, uh, let's say, MDI, which is manual data input. And we'll go here, uh, input A. Uh, sorry, we'll go G0, A0. And that should take it back to my reference position, which is also zero. Here we go. No, I've got to reset it first. And here we go. So that's now zero. Now, I don't know if you can see it there, but that is absolutely spot on zero. And so if we want to go here, A10 or A25, let's say, 25 degrees. 25 degrees. And then we go A50. 50 degrees, back to A0. Now what about A... What about A... 10.15 degrees? No problem. A point... Uh, we'll go back to... Actually we'll go... A... 10.157 degrees. A zero. A point five. The motor did move. A point one. It did move. So as you can see, this is very fine and accurate. In fact, it's accurate to three decimal places, which is uh, more than accurate enough. So yeah, all in all. Um, I'm very pleased with that. So this is just a rough setup, just to verify that everything works. The next thing will be to box all this up in a nice cabinet and um, get all the wires shielded and build a home switch for it, get it talking to the Mazak, and then we should be up and running with a very usable system. Okay, bye.